We're going to look at heating curves, changes of state, section 6.4, and we've got three learning goals. I will be able to explain what is meant by latent heat, explain what happens during changes of state, and solve for the heating of a substance. So the substance we're going to be looking at is water, or ice to water to steam, which is very common. So we're going to start off taking a look at a picture. This is right out of the textbook. Uh, we've got a glacier, which is essentially a great big sheet of ice. The ice will even exist in the summertime. This is a sheet of ice which uh, is probably thousands of years old. But even in the middle of summer, the ice is still there. It does melt slowly. It doesn't completely go away. And there's a little placard right here that shows you in 1992, this is where the front edge of the glacier was and now it's perhaps another 100 meters further away. So very slowly it retreats, but depending on global temperatures, because they've now noticed that with global warming, these glaciers are retreating much quicker. But the basic idea is you have this massive sheet of ice, which even in hot summer days, like plus 30 degrees, doesn't just instantly go away. Now, why does it take a long time for this to melt? Well, it has to do with the fact that ice needs a lot of energy to go from solid to liquid. Uh, here's another glacier on this side of the highway. You can see the ice was here in 1925. Now it is, I mean, it's difficult to judge, but maybe several hundred meters over there. So that's how far it's gone in almost 100 years. So glaciers retreat because the solid ice is being melted and the water is flowing away from the glacier. Uh, process takes years to occur because the amount of thermal energy required to melt ice is extremely large. So undergoing a change of state. Changes of state can occur because the energy is either being added or removed. So this was our solid atoms very close together, molecules very close together. If I was to add some energy in, or if there was energy absorbed, the solid could eventually turn into a liquid, and if you added more energy, it could eventually turn into a gas. So this would be solid to liquid to gas. This is a change of state when it's going from one to the next. Uh, we can reverse this, it would be like a cooling effect. I have a gas which when I cool it can condense down to a liquid. If I cool it even further, it can turn into a solid. But as you undergo a change of state, there's something interesting that happens. When a substance undergoes a change of state, the temperature remains constant. What temperature does water freeze? Zero. What temperature does water boil? 100. So if you have water that's boiling trying to make your crap dinner, even though you've got the stove cranked up and the elements glowing red hot, the temperature in the pot is not going to go higher than 100. So there's something going on there. There's something called latent heat. Latent, which means hidden heat, is essentially thermal energy being added into a substance, but the temperature remains constant. You've got your pot of water on the stove, you're trying to make craft dinner, it's cranked up, it's boiling like crazy, but if you were to put a thermometer in, it would only say 100 degrees. Essentially what's happening is that hidden heat simply means energy that's going into the water to make it go from a liquid to a gas. It's to make it change state. It's not to make it get any hotter. So the energy is going into the change of state. Specific latent heat values. So these are some specific values. There are charts in your textbook listed page 291. And you wouldn't have to memorize these. You'd be given them on a test. So we've essentially got two equations, uh, although they look very similar to each other. Uh, in this case, you've got Q. Q represents quantity of heat. M is the mass. Now right here, you've got this LF. Okay, LF is the latent heat of fusion. And again, this would be in a chart. Fusion is the change of state between solid and liquid. And if you look over on this one, you've got a Q, you've got an M, so that's obviously quantity of heat, and this is the mass of the substance. But in this case, you've actually got LV. LV stands for the latent heat of vaporization. Vaporization is going from gas to liquid or liquid to gas. So this is liquid to gas. This is solid to liquid. So we're going to take a look at this example. We've got a block of ice at minus 15 degrees, which means it was probably in a freezer. And what we want to do is we want to heat it up to 122 degrees Celsius. And the question is, find the total thermal energy. So we're going to sketch a little graph. So what I've done is I've set this temperature graph up. I've got my minus 15 degrees. Uh, I've got 100, which is the boiling point of water. And then our upper temperature is 122. So I'm just going to draw in the lines. I would go from minus 15 to 0. When I hit 0, this is where ice undergoes a change of state. And as we just talked about a second ago, there is no change in temperature, so that would flat line. Then this is the water, which is starting to heat up. Once I reach 100 degrees, this is now the boiling point of water, which can increase. And then up here, I can superheat steam. 
So we're going to label these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start solving it section by section. So in section 1, we've got ice warming up. So let's calculate Q, MC delta T. Now we need to be a little bit careful. Uh, specific heat capacity of ice is not the same as a specific heat capacity of water. So we need to go find it in our chart. 2100 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And then for delta T, which is T2 minus T1, our T2 is 0, and our original temperature was minus 15, so it's going to be 0 minus minus 15. 39,375 joules. That's the amount of energy required to warm up the ice. Now we look at the next step. Now if we go back up, uh, that's where we're going to start uh, the change of state. So this is where ice is melting. Anytime you have a change of state, we have to use the new equation. Can't use MC delta T because delta T is zero. So M times LF, it's LF because this is the change of state from solid to liquid, latent heat of fusion. And the latent heat of fusion for water is 340,000 joules for every kilogram of ice that you have. So to melt the ice, 425,000 joules of energy. Now we can go back up and have a look. So we've done step one, step two, step three is going to be the heating of water. So we'll go down here, step three. So we're going to go from, you've essentially now got a pot with water in it that's at zero degrees Celsius. So Q equals MC delta T. Our mass is still 1.25 kilograms. Specific heat capacity of water is 4,180. And the delta T, it goes from 0 to 100. So 100 minus 0. So if I want to take that little bit of water and make it boil, 522,500 joules of energy. So now all of our water is boiled. We have brought it up to this point right here. Now on the chart, number 4 is where the water is boiling. So there's now a change of state. So for part four, water is boiling. Again, change of state. So we can't use MC delta T. So we will use mass times late heat of vaporization. Vaporization because we are taking water and turning it into a gas. So when we go to do this, it's kind of like you have a closed pot. So once the water starts to boil and it turns into steam, the steam can't escape. It's still inside the pot and we're continuing to heat the pot. So the latent heat of vaporization for water is 2,300,000 joules for every kilogram of water that you have. Very big number. Huge. So we multiply that out. 2,875,000 joules of energy just to take that water and turn it into steam. Now part five. This is the last step. This is where we are taking the steam and we're heating it. So if we look, we've got our water, which is now boiled and turned into steam, and we've now got steam which we can heat up. And we'll raise the temperature of the steam to 122 degrees. So because there's a change in temperature, we're back to MC delta T. Now, this is not water. This is steam, which means the specific heat capacity is different. Uh, this is the one we wrote in our textbook. The specific heat capacity of steam is only 201 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the temperature went from 100 up to 122. Not very much. 5,527.5 joules. So not very much energy is required to heat the steam. So now we've done all of those five steps. The total energy required, so I now need to know when it was minus 15 degrees out of the freezer all the way up to 122 degrees, how much is that going to take? Well, we simply add them all up. Q1, Q2, Q3. 3,867,402 joules, or if we put into sig digs, 3.87 times 10 to the 6th joules. Um, now, this is kind of interesting because it's almost... 4 million joules of energy. If we scroll back and look, just for the water to be boiled and turned into steam takes almost 3 million. So 2.8 million joules of energy was to take 
100 degrees Celsius water and turn it into steam. It's almost all of this energy. It is an incredible amount of energy that's required to take water and turn it, turn it into steam. That's one of the reasons why when you're boiling water in your stove, it boils for a really long time before the water disappears. But that definitely takes a lot of energy. And if we go and take a look at the ice melting, which is another change of state, this is another very large number. Just for the ice to melt takes 425,000 joules of energy. So melting ice, change of state takes a lot of energy, but the really big one is to take uh, water and boil it and turn it into steam is a very, very large amount. So to undergo a change of state takes a huge amount of energy.